Welcome to the Simple Doesn't Mean Easy podcast. We are here weekly working at simplifying things in our lives, and I am your host, Michelle Visser. This is our seventh season of the podcast, and it's a really great one. We are diving in each episode to one different thing that we really need to have in our diet daily. And we are dissecting the details that we really need to know about each item. Now, when I mentioned this theme to our guest today, which who, by the way, I'm so excited, David Stelzer, the CEO and founder of Azure Standard is here talking with us today. And when I mentioned to him as we were recording that, well, you know, but sugar isn't really a necessary thing, but I really wanted to have an episode about it kind of thing. He, and I just threw that in and went on, he paused and backed up and he said, you know, just so you know, it is necessary. So listen in to that because he makes a very good point And I'm really glad that he did that. I mean, to me, it's necessary. Maple syrup is a staple that I have to have in my life daily. It just is. But David makes a really good argument to why it legitimately is necessary. And um, I mean, any sweetener, not necessarily it doesn't have to be maple syrup, but you know, I don't know why I just whispered that. It doesn't have to be maple syrup. <laughs> um, but I did want to tell you, there are so many things that David talks through, so many different sweetener options that I realized just listening to this audio, it's hard to you know, wrap your head around all this information. So rest assured, if you go to solelyrested.com, S-O-U-L-Y rested.com, and just go to the search bar and type S7E3 for season seven, episode three. Everything about this episode will come up in an article for you. You, of course, can go to the show notes as well. Show notes are great, but they're limited and it's really hard to follow links there or really have a lot of information in the limited show notes. So go to solelyrested.com and search S7E3. Or you could also search David Seltzer's name, or you could probably search as your standard and come across it pretty easily. Although I do talk about Azure Standard in other ways on my site as well, because I love this company and I'm really excited about today's topic. Um, also go while you're there, go to solelyrested.com slash pantry and make sure you download my totally free in-depth detailed pantry checklist. And almost all these sugars we're talking about are going to be on there as well as well as all the other items in my pantry that I would love for you to know about. Um, and if you've caught the first two seasons, the first two episodes in the season, you already know, I'm elated that Azure Standard reached out to me and wanted to sponsor this season because it, it couldn't be more perfect. It really couldn't. I told them the connection between what we're talking about and what they do is, is perfection. Like it, it really is. Um, and this is like the best thing about what I do that I get to do my research, find what I feel are truly the best options. And then I get to share it with you guys, but then full circle, the companies that I work with, sometimes I get to connect directly to you in ways like, you know, them sponsoring this podcast, the whole thing gets me truly excited. I mean, seriously, it's why I do what I do. So I'm elated that they are sponsoring this season. Please go check them out and support them. And to say thank you to you, they have a special for you. Use code solely rested one zero. So S-O-U-L-Y rested, the number one zero, solely rested 10. If you are a new customer to Azure Standard, and you will get 10% off your entire first order that's delivered to a drop near you. So, oh, you do have to spend $50, but trust me, they have so much amazing goodness. It's not going to be a problem for you. Um, and also, if you go to either the show notes or that article on my website that I mentioned, I will leave a link there that makes it super easy for you to find the drop nearest you and to use this code. Everything will be there. So you don't even have to remember the code. Just go search for the show notes in one of those places and everything that you need will be there. And now let's bring on David. We are joined today 
on the Simple Doesn't Mean Easy podcast by David Stelzer, who's the founder and CEO of Azure Standard. Now, anybody who follows me over on Instagram knows Azure Standard. They, You guys hear about it pretty much every month. I'm ordering from Azure Standard and I'm showing you what I'm getting. I'm always excited about my order. But I do realize that a lot of my podcast listeners aren't always following me on Instagram. So I do want to explain that Azure Standard is this fantastic independent food supply chain that I rely on greatly myself. It has literally taken out the middleman in so many things that I'm buying every month. And it's connected me as the consumer directly to the food supplier, which blows my mind. It gets me excited every month when I go to pick up my food that there was no middleman. It came right to me on a truck. Um, But on top of all that, what I really love about your company, David, is that you personally and everyone that works for you, you're picky. You, You don't choose any old supplier and you don't choose any old product. And I know if I'm purchasing from Azure that it's real food. It's natural ingredients. I'm not purchasing junk. Um, And I love your story too. I know that you began farming organically as a teenager back in the 70s, right? That's true. And I know from the beginning, you had a passion for healthy food without the chemicals. Well, and healthy soil, you know, that's where it all, that's where it all starts is uh, working with, you know, working with soil and plants. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then from, you know, small beginnings, you, you started selling the grain that you were growing on your family farm and you were asked if I understand it right by your customers to bring other things as well, not just your grain, but kind of pick up other food supplies for them. And the idea of Azure standard started in your brain. Yeah. And back in, was it 1987? 1987. Yeah, I came, you know, it was two things, really. I mean, some of it, I'm, originally the grain and stuff I was selling primarily to smaller natural food stores and co-ops and stuff. Okay. And uh, two things happened. One is they started asking for other things. Oh, well, do you have lentils or beans or this and that? And I'm like, yeah, well, I don't, I can't grow those, but I know someone who can. So mm-hmm. I went and I went and got some. Um, and started adding those to my list, the ones the, that these stores and stuff wanted. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of started with, you know, friends and acquaintances and stuff. But I was doing these little routes out like Eastern Washington, uh, Ellensburg, Tri-Cities, Yakima. Well, on my way to Seattle, I was doing this little round and they started asking, hey, can you bring me this and that from Portland? or from Seattle or whatever. I'm like, well, yeah, I guess. So I did it as a favor for, you know, and then pretty soon I'm stopping three or four places every time picking stuff up. And I think, you know, I probably should not maybe do this as a favor for free. There might be something <laughs> here that we can. Um, so I put a list together of things that I was asked for quite a few different times. And, uh, my wife and I, I was newly married at the time. Um, in fact, uh, tomorrow is my anniversary. I'll be married 30, oh. it's be 37 uh, years tomorrow. Oh, wow. So we were well, just. happy pre-anniversary day. Oh, thanks. So, but, it, but Azure, that following winter, right at that following year, one year after that, we um, put together the first catalog. So my wife types it all out on this old word processor, you know, thing we had. And, that was the first <laughs> Azure catalog. Wow. So, wow. Uh, back in the in the days um, prior to personal computers and internet and all those things when Azure originally started. Wow. That's and I'm guessing it was probably a big giant box of a word processor, right? Nothing like that thin computer screen behind you now. <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. It was one of those uh, <laughs> You would type it on the screen and you could do edits and stuff. And then you published that to the hard drive and then it was permanent, just like a typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> was it green or orange letters on a black screen? Yeah, it was kind of yeah. green, green letters. Yeah. <laughs> we are aging ourselves for sure. I, I greatly remember this. 
Um, but anyway, it uh, so that's kind of how Azure was born. Act, you know, in a way, accidentally, it was just because I've there was a market that somebody needed to do it, and then it kind of became in my brain, hey, no, this is a this is really something that does need to be done. And that's why we came up with the name Azure Standard when we actually started doing this, mm -hmm. because we're trying, and that was, I want to remind myself always that we're talking about keeping a standard. And you mentioned mm -hmm. that we're picky. Um, you know, picky, I don't like to put it that way. I, I like to say that we're holding a standard and not compromising the standard. And mm -hmm. so having the Azure standard or the, and Azure is a, a shade of blue. It's a, it's a color and um, blue is always signified, you know, law, justice. That's why we have blue um, field with, in our flag for the white stars at, in heraldry that stands for law. So the, you know, the stars symbolize the states. They're in a field of blue symbolizing they're tied together by common laws right and yeah. the same so i was thinking well if we're gonna set a standard let's set a set a a standard that is um a higher standard that's stable um and so that's what we've tried to do I can't say i've never made a mistake some things have hit us sideways you know, it took a, a little bit, you know, for instance, genetically modified. I didn't really realize what was going on until probably five years after it came out, until mm -hmm. it started happening. This is like, oh, dang, this is, so I actually had to go back and revert. And it took a couple years to get everything out. Mm, of. I'm sure. Know, um, so we try to stay on it a little bit more with the new things that are coming out. I mean, lately it's things like, you know, appeal. It's just, you know, dumb stuff, but it's hitting the organic market even with some, uh, with a few of these big box stores. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I actually just found something myself just this last month that you guys have removed from your availability because they can no longer guarantee that every part of the product is GMO free. I think they're called rainbow chips and I have never Sun had drops. them. I was so sad about this. <laughs> I am they hoping change what they're doing. Yeah. So the, the manufacturer that manufactured them um, was having a GMO free. I had a GMO free statement so that they were, they were certified to be GMO free. They dropped the GMO free statement and they're now getting their oils off the conventional market, which uh, means there's about an 80 to 90% chance they're genetically modified. Mm. So wow. we just, we dropped it. I mean, some companies tend to raise their standards higher and others lower their standards. And so we will be working very hard, even if we have to, even if we have to contract, get them custom made for us. They're mm. basically kind of an M&M &M replacement or yeah. a healthy version of an M&M or healthier version of an M&M. &M. Yeah. Good point. Healthier, not exactly healthy, but yeah. Um, one of my followers on Instagram, because every month I'm sharing, this is my haul this month, you know, and she was telling me, well, my favorite thing to get are these chips. So I went and looked them up and I got back to her. I said, they're not available anymore. And she said, oh no. <laughs> so I will reassure her too, that you're going to come out with we're something. Gonna, so we're going to work on it. Um, I'm working with a manufacturer in Peru right now that I'm wow. hoping can do it for us um, to our standards. And if we wow. are able to do that, I'm hoping that we can get all the way to a certified organic product. In okay. those... Now, how do you keep on top of all of it? I mean, I can't even imagine, like in this case, did they tell you they were changing the way they were doing things? I assume not. We ask uh, every year we go through a, so Azure keeps not only you know, certifications, but COAs or certificates of analysis. Mm -hmm. And we update those. I have a team that updates those every single year. Okay. And so it was actually that team that caught the, the discrepancy. 
because the old certificate had the non-GMO, the new certificate did not. Hmm. And so we are uh, the analysis, um, cert- the COA that we request from every company. Some, some things we get one with every new lot number, some we just update once a year, depending on what the okay. product is. And so we went into, so we actually called the company up and said, hey, what's going on? Was this an oversight? No, it wasn't. It was intentional. Hmm. And they, wow. because they can't guarantee it anymore. So, wow. you know, hey. Well, I greatly appreciate, and I know a lot of folks, a lot of folks do, that you are kind of the watch guard in this situation. And you're, you know, like I said, not only getting rid of the middleman, which eliminates a lot of potential problems, but you're the watch guard up front. You're not taking anything in that you're even offering to the consumer that you don't personally feel is a good quality product. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we do our best, you know, like I say, it took, I mean, maybe a few batches went out before we caught that because we only Mm -hmm. do it once a year, but I don't think very much did, if any, Yeah. but the, um, you know, I feel like that's our job in this, you know, in what we do is to make sure that we're the first line of defense here. And, you know, you were earlier talking that about the progression you know we're talking a little bit about uh sweeteners and in many many times when we change our diets there is a progression it's not it's not something if we go if we do a radical change many times it becomes a diet and we revert after the diet's over Mm. if we want to actually change our health long term for the good it's not a diet right. it's a progression and it becomes a lifestyle this right. is the you know this is the way we eat oh are, i'm not on a special diet this is the way i eat yeah and i think there's a there's a huge difference there and so that's why azure even though i mean maybe there are certain things um, that Azure may carry that personally I probably wouldn't use in my house. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're all a progression. Yes. Moving from, shall we say, the, the standard American diet type yeah. to a healthier alternative. Right. And, if and we I can love it. Take those steps one at a yes. time. Exactly. And I love it that Azure is there helping folks take those steps. You know, you're not only for the person who's eating only perfectly, totally organic foods. You're there for folks, like you said, one step at a time for the whole progression. And I really do love that. Um, well, this season on the podcast, I know I had explained to you that we are talking about. Um, we're doing deep dives into different essential things we need in our diet and what we should know about them. And today's episode is not actually an essential thing, but it's one of those things that, I mean, I actually, anybody who's watching on YouTube, I was going to put on a nicer outfit, (laughs) but I decided, no, I need to leave my hoodie on because this is the perfect hoodie. It's my maple hoodie. Um, And today we're talking about something that is not necessary in our diet, but let's face it. I mean, most of us really do love sweet items And if we're going to use sweeteners, let's work at having better sweeteners. And if we don't totally go over to the best sweetener 100% for our family, we can definitely take steps, like you're saying, invest into some other different sweeteners, little bits at a time. And so today I was hoping you could help us work through what are the other options and, you know, what are they good for? What are the flavor profiles, anything like that, that we want to dive into. But first of all, I thought we'd start. Tell us about the sugars that Azure does not carry, the refined white sugar that you can get at, you know, your box grocery store for, I don't know, I guess it's probably a couple bucks now for a four pound bag. Um, but I know that's something nobody can ever buy through Azure. So tell us some about, I mean, the chemical treatments that go into that or the processing that goes into that and why that's something you wouldn't carry. All right. <clears throat> Right before I say that, I would like to uh, give a slight different position on sugar. 
Okay. Uh, in general, you said it's something that's not necessary in our diets. Technically, it is. Oh. So all, all, all energy on Earth is run from sugars. All right. Okay. So every, every thing from the smallest microorganism to the largest mammal on the world in the world is all powered. All of our energy is gotten by sugars. Sugars are made okay. naturally through the photosynthetic action in plants. All right, they're they're um, plants are the only thing that can do that through photosynthetic chlorophyll action converts water and sunlight into sugar, and that is one of the miracles of life. That is one Absolutely. of the things that uh, science can't really explain and the foundations of life. Mm -hmm. So just to be very clear that when you're talking about sugars in a very general sense, they are foundational to life. All right. And David, I am so glad that you stopped me and said that because I mean, I'm, I like, I wrote the book on maple syrup. I am a huge fan of sugar. <laughs> so I was trying to kind of be a little, you know, reserved and say, I know it's not something we have to have, but I'm so glad you corrected me because you are so right. Energy is important. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a part of, uh, of life. Yeah. But if you go into a, what has been damaging to human health is refined sugars and sugars out of balance. Mm -hmm. So nature in nature, the, and I'll go even a little bit deeper than that. In nature, a plant, and I'll try to do this fast, but uh, in, in a plant, when it does a photosynthetic action, the sugars are typically distributed four ways in that plant because a, about a quarter of that sugar goes out in the root system to create the roots, a quarter it to the bulk of the plant, about a quarter goes into producing the seed or the fruit, the reproduction portion, and about a quarter is actually exuded through the roots to feed the microbes in the soil to mm. create a healthier ecosystem because then the microbes use that energy to break down the minerals, to mineralize the soil, to allow that plant um, to get all the nutrients it needs to be even healthier. Mm. The healthier the plant is, the more complex that sugars are. So in organic agriculture, we have this, and I have done this experiment multiple times and it works perfectly. But in a super healthy plant, a, most insects do not touch a healthy plant. The reason for that, now I'm talking about um, uh, sap sucking insects here. But there is, I can go deeper into this as well, but things like aphids and white flies and this typical sap sucking stuff that you would find right. in the garden or whatever. In, the right. perf, in, the, in a healthy plant, when they have the right mineralization of the soil, the plant builds a complex polysaccharide. And the more complex that polysaccharide is, the less digestible it is to insects the more digestible it is to humans or all hmm. mammals, actually. Well, pretty much all animals. So so the groundhog will also benefit from it that gets into my garden. That, yeah, <laughs> it's not going to, it's not, having good polysaccharides <laughs> is not going to help with the gophers or the groundhogs, yeah, but yeah. it will help with the aphids and the white flies hmm. and stuff That's like that. So okay. I've actually done experiments with super mineralized soil, like something that gets in, uh, aphid infestation really badly like kale is very susceptible yeah. put that out there and then we damage uh, intentionally damage a few plants like cut some of the roots or something mm -hmm. um, the the aphids attack those damaged plants the rest of them don't have an aphid on them hmm. because the aphids need a simple sugar they cannot um, they need a monosaccharide ideally and when a plant is healthy it gives a, a more complex sugar the less healthy it is the uh, simpler the sugar and often when you're dealing with fruit you'll you'll see even all the way down to almost just a fructose um, mm. 
in that in that fruit. Uh, in so that's another reason that you want to get food from a healthy plants and healthy ecosystems that have not been thrown out of balance by the use of artificial fertilizers and nitrogen and things like that. So now yeah. we go into the question you actually asked okay. about conventional sugar. Um, okay. So um, conventional sugar, there's a couple things. One is, and this is true with any plant, the more, um, so nitrogen is the growth regulator of a plant. Nitrogen is um, a min, it's, it's a nutrient that every plant needs a certain amount of. Also, mm -hmm. the air that we breathe is majority nitrogen, but it's not usable to a plant until microbes have broken it down. So microbes can take the nitrogen from the air and convert it to a nitrate that a plant can use in the soil or on the leaf, either one. Primarily that happens in the soil. And legumes do a very good job of that, but almost every plant can do that. So if you take up a clover, you find the little nitrogen nodules actually on the roots. Yeah. That's, uh, that's how nature intended nitrogen to be uh, created for a plant. And when it's done that way, it's in balance. The plant won't grow larger than what the nutrients in the soil can support. Uh, conventional agriculture has gotten real smart and they've created this product called anhydrous ammonia. It's a, it's a nitrogen synthesizer. It synthesizes the nitrogen, pretends it's nitrogen, and uh, makes the plant grow bigger and have a lot more mass. Hmm. Um, but it has, it, it doesn't have all the other nutrients that are needed for that plant to get optimum health. So it's going into simple sugar mode, also simple uh, protein mode as well. And I, you know, um, this is very clear when you're talking about things like wheat with the gluten intolerances. But with mm -hmm. sugars, it's very similar. You're creating mm -hmm. an extremely simple sugar, fructose mm -hmm. or glucose. And so when they, so number one, You've got a plant that has, you know, if it's sugar cane, in the case of cane sugar, or sugar beets, which are even worse that way. Yeah, more processed, um, right? Well, they have to be more processed, but also they're genetically modified, and the um, they react much better to anhydrous ammonia. So they're mm. you, they're gaining a lot more mass through use of oh. anhydrous ammonia. Um, but they do it on both. Um, so now you have a plant that did not create a complex sugar. They're creating a very simple sugar, hmm. um, usually just sucrose or glucose. And, and then, you know, in conventional sugar cane, let's just concentrate on cane to begin with. Um, because usually people say, oh, well, cane sugar is okay. Beet sugar, we understand that's GMO and yeah. highly processed and this and that. But how about cane sugar? That's good stuff. Yeah. Well, okay. So first of all, you you push that plant, the sugar cane, with anhydrous ammonia. You're adding that artificial synthesized nitrogen source. Then you're going to go in because sugar cane is still growing green. And that's why they used to use lots of slaves and stuff in the sugar fields is because they had to go in and cut that cane and knock all the leaves off because you can only juice the cane. You can't do the leaves. Mm -hmm. So now they came up with this bright idea using glyphosate that you can go in and spray glyphosate directly on the crop when it's just about ready to harvest the cane and it will kill all the leaves of the, mm. of the sugar cane. And the leaves then dry up and the stalk stays moist the, because the stalk has a lot more mass mm. and it's got all this sugar in it that's preserving it. And so mm. then you can go in and get all these leaves to dry up. And then to make it even easier, you light a fire and you burn that glyphosate soaked leaves. You burn all those off and it will go through so fast because those leaves are all super dry 
goes through and real fast burns all the leaves and and the stalks will still be standing and all the leaves are burned off then and all of course while that's happening you have heat and smoke and that glyphosate soaked leaves are just permeating with smoke into that stock hmm. and then they go in and they harvest then they're able to harvest the cane more easily so to make things simple and less labor and so they can actually supply you a four pound bag for two bucks mm -hmm. uh, they are absolutely creating a product that not only is it such a simple sugar, of course, it's refined anyway, but it's such a simple sugar that it goes absolutely directly to your bloodstream, almost like high fructose corn syrup, which mm. is, you know, that's the fructose. This is the glucose, but it hits your blood sugar and you have these extreme fluctuations in, in spikes and valleys in the blood sugar and of course yeah. that hits the liver to create insulin um, and eventually you get some nice little thing called diabetes or yeah and we wonder it's why many a many huge, variations a huge percentage of the u.s population has diabetes and we wonder why but this idea of burning off the leaves, I actually have not heard anywhere else except for you. And I, I find it unbelievable. Like that, And then they're leaving this glyphosate. Is that what you say? Glyphosate, yeah. They're leaving it on this plant and harvesting it. They're harvesting the stalks and making the sugar. So there's not even an attempt to wash it off in any way, right? No, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no requirement to do that. The FDA doesn't oh. say you have to or anything. So it's just. Whatever is needed to keep the bag of sugar cheap. Well, yeah, they're, they're competing and, you know, and, and labor is not quite as cheap as it used to be, even though many of the sugar producing countries, it's still pretty cheap. Yeah. But, um, you know, labor is not like it used to be. And mm -hmm. so the more, uh, you know, the more that you can do like that, is the easier, you know, the cheaper it is to produce because it can all yeah. be mechanized. Yeah. And it's just. Okay. So it's obvious why we can't buy this sugar from Azure Standard. So yeah, um, Azure does not want to be responsible for, you know, something that is that health damaging, that is that obviously that refined and also has the glyphosate residue and all of that, not to mention the, the, terrible damage it does to the environment Very you can actually point. actually i we actually have some photos and stuff of that in our meet the farmer thing on um coconut sugar actually i think it mm. is okay so you'll see some documentation for that process oh okay um, um so if you look okay, up so coconut what about... sugar on the azure website it's it it has a little blurb on that Okay. Okay. And when Karen, Karen, um, your chief executive officer was on last season on the podcast and she, she got me hooked on coconut sugar. <laughs> I'm just saying, okay. <laughs> not as hooked as I am on maple syrup. That will always be my first love, but she was telling us about the coconut sugar. Um, well, that's okay. I kind of have this list of sugars I'd like to go through and you just give us your insight on them. And all of the ones I'm going to mention from now on, I'm pretty sure you do sell through Azure Standard. So now we're getting to the better stuff. So um, these are, you know, step ones and step twos. Yes, type. yes. So tell us about just plain organic cane sugar. Like, um, is, it, is it different if you're saying this is organic cane sugar from, how is it pronounced, Sucanot? Sucanot? Is that organic cane sugar? Sucanot is a branded is a oh, brand okay. right so okay. that's like a trademark okay and it's a kind of sucanot is really pretty much demerara sugar with okay. a different brand oh, okay um, okay and then how like there's also um muscovado and is turbinado turbinado uh, uh, yeah turbinado and uh, demerara are the same thing 
Sometimes okay. they have a different granular size, tend to be, Turbinado is a slightly larger granule okay. uh, than Demerara, but they're the same. Uh, okay. must... I like the turbinado in cookies, especially if I'm using rye to make my cookies, because you can feel the granules of sugar and you get that little bit of the burst of the sugar. So I, I like it for that coarseness in some things. Yeah. So it is used often like to top um, ginger cookies or something like that. Yeah, that it's too. It's kind of yeah. really, um, so there is a definitely a place for that. Um now, are all of those things derived from sugarcane, all the ones we just mentioned? They are, yes. Okay. They're all different processes. So first of all, we have just the organic cane juice crystals or cane sugar. So that is organically processed, so they're not able to use the bleaches and all those things that conventional mm -hmm. sugar uses in the refining process. So basically okay. what they're doing is they're refining the sugar through a centrifuge. So first of all, the organic sugar, the crop is grown without the use of anhydrous ammonia. They have to use only natural fertilizers or what will actually, the soil will actually produce through the microbial health of the soil. Okay. Then when they actually go to remove leaves, that has to be done mechanically and they're, they're then composted and put okay. back on the soil for fertilizer instead of going up in smoke with glyphosate. Okay. So there is a positive uh, piece that goes with that. And there is equipment to remove the leaves mechanically. It's just more expensive and it's slower. Okay. So, you know, it's much faster to light a field on fire than it is to run this machine through and yeah. have it strip the leaves off, put them in a different bin that they can use for compost. And, you know, there's a lot of mass in sugar. So it's a lot of truckloads going out of the field and so on. Sure. So, sure. so that's step one, using organic sugar. And it's a slightly different. You'll find that it's a little bit more crystallized and it's not pearly white. You're not going to get a pearly white. I was going to say it's prettier. White. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now, these different things, they have different levels of color though, don't they? Like, and is that because they're maintaining more of the molasses, some of these different ones? Right. Yeah. So okay. uh, organic sugar, like that we, that we sell as organic cane sugar, that one is centrifuged out to get most of the molasses out. Okay. So, you know, as much as you can get out without actual ref refining, chemical refining, is gotten out. It has very little molasses left in it. Okay. Um, Does that manufacturer then use that as molasses and sell that as a separate product, I assume? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So okay. when you see the organic molasses that we sell, um, that is exactly what that is. Okay. Um, so traditional sugar, um, is musca is now known as muscovado, mm -hmm. um, and that's more the traditional sugar where they're basically letting the molasses drain out naturally without running it through a centrifuge. Oh, okay. So you're they're letting it drain out, they're pressing it out, they're getting a certain amount out, but it still contains quite a bit of molasses. Okay. And that is also used a lot of other names, pamelas. There's a, quite a few other names that that goes by in marketing. But that's okay. kind of the traditional. You'll find in places like India where they've been using sugar cane as a sugar source for years, that's still a very popular sugar. Okay. Um, the mascalado the I, get, I get from you guys as I use that instead of brown sugar because it does have a lot of that molasses in it. It looks like brown sugar. It is very similar in many ways to brown sugar, except brown sugar is usually refined white sugar that they add the molasses yes. back yes. in Which is to crazy. just the yes. right level that they want right. for a brown sugar. Uh, Muscovado is basically that same thing with the molasses never having come out. And it's going to be okay. a little bit less consistent and it's going to clump a little bit more. It's going to Okay. And that's one of the main downsides in the major marketplace because you might have to, because it will kind of stick together and you might have to smack it with a hammer to get it to yeah. break apart. Um, in a humid environment, can it turn into a brick pretty easily? It, it yeah. can, you know, okay. it, it can. I, 
that's one of that's why they don't it's not widely marketed in the US because okay. American consumers don't want to beat their sugar up to yeah know, get it back into they want it to just flow and so that's why brown sugar is done the way it is okay um turbinado is similar in many ways except it's more it's a dried sugar so they're basically with turbinado or demerara which are the same thing they're drying the sugar they're taking the cane they're squeezing out the juice and they're either spray drying or um, some other form of just drying it Okay, so, so the turbinado is drier. It's going to be drier. It's going to be more crystally. That's why when okay. you get sugar cookies, you those bigger clumps, they kind of are almost gritty yeah. on top with that burst of flavor that you're talking yes. about. Yes. That's yes. that's why. Yeah. That that and I love is it. I, I think that's on my process. that's on my Azure order almost every month, I think. <laughs> it's okay. <good> stuff. <laughs> Uh, okay. So are there brands out there posing to, you know, they're, they're selling all of these things we just mentioned, something that they're saying is like those things that they're kind of making it seem like it's a healthier version, but it's pretty much just refined table sugar, but they've put a nice marketing twist to it. <laughs> well, brown sugar, they definitely have done that with. Yeah. And it's definitely nothing that you're going to write home about at all. Yeah. Um, but yes, unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation in this marketplace, and there isn't really any regulation on what you call it. So there's been a lot of mm. brand names come along, different mm. brands. Uh, these are the greatest and the best kind of sugar ever, but it really, it may be one of the natural versions, and it may not even be organic, and they're touting it as a great new product. Well, and 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 branding it under some new uh, brand as if it's some new kind of sugar. It really isn't. Yeah. It's one of these kinds that have just, somebody said, oh, we're going to call it something else. Yeah. And then they register that as a trademark and sell it under that brand. Okay. So that's something that happens pretty, pretty frequently in the marketplace when you're dealing with, you know, and it just adds, it lends confusion. Yeah, it definitely does. Is there anything that we as consumers could be warned? Like what we're certainly, what we're looking for that we go, oh, well, I definitely don't want anything that ever has blank or when well, it comes to sugar. I, one of the things, you know, when you're looking at cane sugar, I, you know, and this is one of the things we look for at Azure. We don't even touch it unless it is actually certified organic. That's okay. the minimum, kind of the minimum um, requirement there. Okay. Uh, once, if it's certified organic, we know that it's been grown better. Um, they're not allowed to use any of the chemicals in refinement. And there is some, there is an agency or somebody that's overseeing that and making sure they're abiding by that. So okay. that's kind of maybe, shall we say a minimum a minimum requirement um, that, you know, they're not going to be able to fake very easily. Yeah. Is there yeah. actually has to be a certification for that. Um, that makes sense. Um, okay. Now, of course, I know there's the other two all natural sweeteners that I think anybody listening to this is going to be really familiar with, but I just wanted to make sure that I did mention, of course, because of my sweatshirt that I'm wearing and because I'm a sugar maker and because I've written the book on maple syrup, of course, maple syrup is a fantastic all natural sweetener. Um, and it, it even is loaded with, you know, minerals and polyphenol compounds. And I'm guessing probably some of the sugars we just talked about also maintain some of their phenolic compounds and have some good for you stuff in them probably they do um, but it's maple syrup and and honey i think the two that you're talking about here yep honey are head are heads and you know head and shoulders above any of the refined cane, you know of the cane yeah. sugars yeah and as of far course, as it's because goes. it's because there is no refining process and it's all coming directly from nature pretty much into your your jar of syrup or your jar of honey so yeah um but there are some sweetener options that I think 
maybe aren't quite as familiar to everybody. Um, so I thought we could get into a few of those as well. And maybe let's start with the ones that I know of that are either no cal. I don't know if they're no calorie, but definitely low calorie. Um, stevia is one of them. Mm-hmm. Stevia confuses me, David, <laughs> because it comes in so many forms. And I'm hoping you can help me understand why are there so many options? You can get it leaf, you can get leaf powder, you can get liquid extract, you can get this white powder. That's you know, like a fine white stevia powder. That's probably the one most people are most familiar with, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, why? Why are there so many options? Tell us about it. Well, of course, stevia is a plant. And if you are an Azure customer, you can actually buy the plant in the springtime yes. through LA Eden if you would like to actually buy a stevia plant. I did. Two summers ago, I planted quite a few stevias from Azure. Yeah. So you can grow your own stevia and it'll actually last a couple of years if you plant it in a greenhouse. It doesn't, or if you're somewhere down in Florida or somewhere in the deep south where it doesn't freeze, it is frost susceptible. But so as a plant, it's really cool because it has a sweet flavor, um, but it doesn't, that sweet flavor is not caused from sugar. It's called, it's caused from the polyphenol compounds that are in stevia in and of itself. And it has nothing, you know, it does have a certain amount of sugar in it because obviously it's a plant has to convert sugars, but you're not actually, the amount of sugar in it for the amount of sweetness is almost negligible Okay. because it fakes our, you know, it's kind of fakes our, um, taste buds into a okay. sweet uh, flavor without it actually being sugar. Hmm. Hmm. Um, so in and of itself, I think the plant itself is very healthy and very nice. And then you have dried stevia leaf and, and so on. Now, when you get into all the extracts and you get all the way to the white powder, you're refining that as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that it can be all bad for people who have to be on a sugar-free diet or a keto diet or something like that. It is a viable option because with the white powder, and usually that white powder is mixed with something else. Okay. Um, you can get just pure stevia powder, which is just the extract. So they're pulling, basically they're treating it almost like they would sugar cane, except they're refining out the polyphenols that have that flavor oh. instead of just the um, instead of the sugar itself because there isn't many okay. sugar to speak of in okay. stevia so they're refining out the portions of it that that give our mouth the sensation of sweet but the refining process definitely there's some studies out there saying that's not the best mm-hmm. you're not actually I mean, it's one thing to eat stevia leaves or put a stevia leaf off a plant in your tea for Which that flavor. Which is what I love it for, yes. Um, I, there couldn't be anything better. That's one of the healthy, you know, super healthy thing you can do. But once you refine this all down, it's definitely questionable mm-hmm. if you're really getting as healthy a product as you thought you were. Right. And there's actually been some concerns about, you know, the... Uh, there's been some serious concerns raised about refined stevia. And, you know, we still, we do sell it. I think there's definitely a place for it for people who definitely ha- have ruined their um, natural systems uh, through overuse of uh, simple sugars. And mm-hmm. they ended up developing diabetes of some sort or another or mm-hmm. some similar. Um, um, thing where you have they have to completely cut refined sugar out and even um, natural sugars uh, will affect them but I think it's something that should be used for short periods of time and get our body back to where we can use healthy or natural sugars um, again and often okay. it's mixed with, uh, you know, alcohol, sh- sugar, al- uh, alcohol type sugars like xylitol or something like that, mm-hmm. um, which, do you, you sell know, stevia extract? I actually do. don't know. You do. Okay. Yeah. So where does that fall in your 
concern? Like, do you have any concerns about the extract? Maybe like the I think powder? the ex I think the extract is halfway in between. So you okay. have the real stevia and the stevia dried stevia. That to me, that's a fully natural product. Then yeah. once you extract it, that's kind of like your, you know, maybe should we say like the organic sugar uh, or a turbinado or whatever. You're okay. You've you've extracted out just a portion. You're not getting all the natural compounds in the stevia leaf itself. Okay. So you, it's a little out of balance. And then when you take it all the way down to the white powder as the sugar substitute, that's refining it all the way down. And okay. I definitely, like I say, I definitely think there's a place for it. I think it's a great option if you need to have a sugar-free diet. For instance, a cancer patient, somebody who's fighting cancer naturally has to go on a diet, at least most everyone I've seen, the doctors recommend a completely sugar-free diet for a period of time. And stevia is a great option um, mm -hmm. to be able to do that because it has no actual sugar in it because right. cancer, you know, sugar feeds cancer. So they, they pull you into an almost sugar-free diet. Obviously it's not long-term healthy, but it is right. a way that the cancer can be gotten back under control. Yeah. And so when you have patients, you know, people that are on those kinds of diets, it is a great option along with monk fruit. Which... That was the next one I was going to ask you about. Before you get into monk fruit, I want you to go there, but can you tell me why doesn't the leaf powder, if you're taking just the, the really crushed up, finely tiny little pieces of leaves, I can't use that in cookies. And I can't mix that in well to anything, right? It doesn't dissolve. Like there's no totally natural way to enjoy stevia for those purposes, is there? I just want to make sure I'm not missing it. No, you're not going to be able to mix it in your cookies very easily. It's It doesn't dissolve in water per se. And hence, that's why it's refined down to the white powder so that it okay. does. Okay. Um, otherwise, and it also has a bit of a green taste to it. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to mix the, the dried stevia into your cookies, it's going to have us off color and it's going to have, it would be like anything else, you know, little pieces of dried lettuce or kale or anything else you mix in your cookies. They're not, right. it's not really dissolving per se. It's just sitting there right. and, and you're really not even getting all the sweet flavor out of it because you'd actually have to crush that that little tiny fragment of leaf to get the kind of flavor out of it right, that you need. Right. So, so what do you think most people use that for? I, I, I buy the leaf and I grow it myself too to use in my teas, but what do you need the leaf powder for? Well, smoothies and things like that, people will use it in. So okay. if you want to sweeten like a protein shake or something like that, um, you put some vegetables and stuff in there. You put a little bit of the stevia in, you get, you know, blend that up. You get a little bit of burst of sweet from okay. that and you already have okay. kind of a green taste. Yeah, you know, that for sure. Would be, okay. Uh, so tell me about monk fruit. I know that it is processed from a, a fruit, um, it, that's grown it is. in Asia, I believe, is it? Most of it is grown in Asia and Mongolia and Northern China. Um, and pretty much that's the only place that it is being processed currently. Okay. Um, so that is one downside to it. It's all coming from China yeah. or Mongolia, which is basically the same thing. Yeah. Um, however, uh, you know, it is something that's been used and it, it is similar in one way to, um, to stevia in that it's, um, uh, it simulates sweetness that it doesn't actually have sugar for. And as far as I know, those are like the only two plants in the world that actually have a very strong um, amount of that flavor simulation. And I Monk think people fruit. love them because they're extremely low or are they zero in calories? Yeah, it's zero sugar. Okay. Pure monk fruit is basically by the time you get, and it, and it, the simulation of flavor is so strong, it takes for pure monk fruit, it's at least a hundred times sweeter than sugar. Mm. So you can put such a small amount in 
that there is, you know, as far as the flavor profile we're talking about here, right? Um, put such a small amount in that the sugar doesn't even register a little amount. So you could actually put on the nutrition panel, zero sugar hmm. um, uh, and zero calories from the, from that itself. Okay. So if you're yeah, using that as a sweetener. Fruit. I get my monk fruit from you guys. I'm probably going to need to stock up soon because I use it for my homemade instant hot chocolate mix that I make. I put some adaptogens in there that I also get from you guys. And I add my monk fruit because I like that it's no calorie and it makes it taste really good. (laughs) So, And the thing about um, monk fruit is, is that even though they bring it down to the basically the white powder, it's basically dehydrated juice. You're not having to refine it as much as stevia because Mm. it is coming from a fruit and not from a Mm. leaf. Interesting. So it is less refined. I would say it's a... You know, if you're going to use that, again, I think in a way it's a stop gap. If you're going to use it, and I, you know, I'm, I think it's a, it's a better option than Stevia okay. for the same result. Hmm. And I do know a lot of times, and some of the ones we sell are Stevia monk fruit mixes hmm. that okay. actually um, works pretty well um, for a zero sugar item. But okay. uh, but monk fruit in and of itself, I think, as far as for zero sugar, um, is probably the healthiest one you're going to get. Okay. Way healthier than, you know, alcohol sugars and such. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I mean, you did kind of allude to something right there, too, that anytime you were having something that's zero calories, I mentioned in my, my book that stevia is not my first choice because it doesn't have the nutrients. It's not giving us any polyphenols. I, well, maybe it is, though. Maybe the leaves are. Well, if you're using the leaves. whole plant in your tea okay. or whatever, it is. It's okay. pretty healthy. There's actually okay. even some, you know, some herbal medicine value in it. But hmm. the but once you refine it down to that but, white powder that, white that you're going to look in using cookies... Yeah. No, yeah. not so much. It's and even with you... and monk fruit, the same thing. You're not getting any nutrient value out of it. It's just, right. it's something that's just changing the flavor profile. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So help us understand the differences in a few other things that, um, like I said, I think a lot of people maybe aren't really familiar with things like date syrup. I purchased date syrup for you guys because I like it in my salted caramel hot chocolate <laughs> because mm-hmm. I think it tastes a little bit you know, like molasses and yet it's also sweet. I'm not a fan of molasses, um, but, but date syrup, how is that made? How, how would you describe it? Date sugar is very natural. Um, you're just basically grinding up dates. Okay. Um, it's ground up dates with a little bit of um, water in it to give it that liquid format. And of mm-hmm. course, if the water is completely out, you have what's called date sugar. Yes. And which is something we also sell. Um, yes. Uh, and so you're, you know, kind of like maple syrup and maple sugar. Maple syrup is say the that. liquid, you know, it's not dehydrated down as much, has a little bit more water in it. If you take it all the way down, it becomes uh, maple sugar. Right. And date, date is the same thing. And it's just made out of dates. Dates is a natural fruit that grows on a palm tree. It's actually very nutrient dense, you know. In the Middle East, uh, yeah. dates are called bread. They actually call them bread dates oh. because dates are mm-hmm. used kind of as the staff of life in certain parts of, you know, the North Africa and the Mediterranean region um, in the Middle East. Okay. So, you know, dates are, um, you know, they've been being used as a food source for thousands and thousands of years and are you know they're very and they're very sweet but the sweetness with them because of the way they they grow especially the organic ones they have a complex sugar and so they're not going to hit your blood sugar all at once like a refined Mm -hmm. sugar more similar to you know maple syrup or honey but maybe even a little bit slower because it's just fruit yeah i.e the the date Right. Um, Is there any special way to store it? Because I know after a bit of a time, it can become pretty um, 
what's the word thick gloppy is there any that is yeah it's one of the things about date strip that will settle out eventually so you you know ideally you need to stir it once in a while okay but that's you know okay so just stir it up get it moving. yeah just stir <laughs> it up i don't really know a better way we actually had somebody mention you should put that in you know like a, a glass jar instead of a plastic jar so you can so we can stir that more easily like a wide mouth and so we'll mm -hmm. probably do that we'll probably start selling it in like a wide mouth quart candy jar or something for people i was actually thinking that. that when i got my order this time i have an order coming next week and i have date syrup in it and i was actually thinking about transferring it to a mason jar myself so yeah I, I, will. I would recommend that because then it's easy to stir up you know in the yeah. plastic bottle it's a little harder so we're actually um taking that seriously we'll probably do that here in the next couple months that's a great offer idea. offer that as an option at least but Obviously, i do think do you find i know i see it from my perspective that in general people who are trying to eat healthier and they're coming to you getting these slightly unusual things that they can't find locally or they haven't even heard of maybe until they came to azure site you know um we don't mind that it's not quite as convenient and it's not pearly white bleached we're glad it's not right um you know i think that we we have grace for that because we're excited that this is something healthier we're feeding our family and we're realizing that sometimes there's a little bit of convenience we give up or a little bit of you know whatever it might be you know that's probably true um but you know what eventually i think if you actually make a commitment to it you don't even notice it anymore I agree. You know, it's not something that we even notice. You know, we don't, yeah. if we're not going to have white sugar or corn syrup, any of those things in our house, it's just not there. It's not something we go for. It's not something that we would ever use. And these other things are not that, that much more difficult. So, yeah. you know, honey, for instance, roughly twice as sweet as sugar. Use half as much in any recipe. It's pretty close. Maple syrup's not too, you know, it's a little yeah, bit less sweet than three honey, quarter. But, use about yeah, three quarter a cup. Yeah. About three quarters of what you would for sugar. It's really not yeah. that hard to make that transition to healthy sweeteners. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, you know, we use a lot of actually uh, coconut sugar is one of the go tos in, yeah, in our house. I was going to ask you about that next. Tell and me about that. In many ways, coconut sugar from a nutrient profile is not that much different than honey. Coconut mm -hmm. has this huge blossom, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it gives so much nectar, they actually tap the blossom and let the nectar run into these little pots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they basically uh, boil it down, kind of like is done with maple syrup. Mm -hmm. um, maple syrup is a sap. Coconut sugar is a nectar. But yeah. instead of letting the bees collect it, like honey, and the bees do the same thing, they dry it down to a, you know, nectar is much more right. liquid. Yep. And bees in the hive, they blow on it with their wings and so on, and eventually dry that to a certain level before they cap the, the honey off. So it'll keep right. and, you know, for a long period of time. Um, and coconut sugar, it's been being used in Indonesia for a thousand years or more. And the native, you know, they basically boil it down the same way that, you know, maple syrup is to take a certain percent of the moisture out. And you can also get coconut syrup, which we sell mm -hmm. as well. But the coconut sugar is just taken down kind of like maple sugar one level farther. Yeah, but it where, tastes nothing like coconut. I feel like we need to make sure everybody knows that. Well, just like clover honey tastes nothing like clover, right? Good you know, point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You know, it, it's, the, it's the nectar. And it also, we had to fight this with the uh, FDA as an industry, not just us. But because uh, they originally said coconut sugar was an allergen. It was a tree oh. nut but we finally got them to back off. It is not an allergen, it is not a tree nut. It is the nectar, no right. more than uh, almond honey is a tree nut. Right, It's wow. not. 
So mm -hmm. now it is coconut sugar is not a, does not have to be de declared as a tree nut allergen because it does not affect anyone who has a tree nut allergy can eat coconut. It right. It's right. not related to if somebody's actually allergic to coconut, they're not going to be allergic to coconut sugar. Right. Because it's not anything. It's totally unrelated. <laughs> it, yeah. Even though it comes from the same tree. Yeah. Um, it's in a completely different form and stage and has a completely different um, protein compounds that are in it. Right. But it is. So you said this is the one, coconut sugar is the one in your house that you use the most. Is that what you were about to I say wouldn't, earlier? I wouldn't necessarily say that. In okay. our house, we don't, we do use occasionally some stevia and stuff, but not much. Our kind of go-to, we have, you know, three sweeteners in our house, except for once in a while, we have a little tiny bag of uh, the organic cane sugar just for certain cakes and stuff my daughter does yep. baking so okay. once in a while but even cakes she's made but our three sweeteners to go to uh are honey maple syrup and coconut sugar okay. those are the three that we always have in our house for depending on what it is uh coconut sugar because it's cooked and all that we tend to use that more in cooking mm -hmm. and things that are going to be cooked anyway um and maple syrup obviously is already cooked down as well, but I guess technically we don't use that as much in cooking as we do the coconut, the coconut sugar. Mm -hmm. that well, because you have to substitute, you know, if you're using a liquid sugar, most recipes are calling for a dry sugar. So there is a little bit of thought you have to give it. It's a lot easier to grab the dry sugar. It's coconut sugar. Years ago, for me, it's maple sugar. years ago, before um, we used to cook with honey quite a bit. And, you know, that recipe is not that difficult to substitute out. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, I found, I feel like honey is much healthier raw. You know, yes. beekeepers, you know, uh, as a world statistic, uh, occupationally, beekeepers are the longest lived occupation in the world. And these I are heard people, this. Yeah. So. Yeah. And they're eating, and usually they're eating honey, but they're also kind of, they don't bother making it super refined. They're getting some wax and propolis and pollen and all that mm -hmm. mixed in it. It's kind of like unrefined honey, so to speak, or kind of sloppy honey that mm -hmm. folks are, you know, you know, usually if you'd sell that in the market, people would say, oh, what's all this stuff in my honey? Mm -hmm. But this, you know, but as a sweetener, uh, honey is is really strong when used raw. But I feel like a lot of the enzymes are destroyed when you're like baking with it. So that's why we've kind of converted our baking more to coconut sugar. Yeah. As as a go-to, and yeah. sometimes maple sugar, especially for cookies. There's nothing better than a maple sugar mm. cookie. I don't know. Just yeah. have a prejudice <laughs> towards that particular uh, one. But <laughs> well, the only thing that would make it better is if you put maple cream on your maple sugar cookie as icing. That would okay. be the only thing that would improve. <laughs> Um, we actually are beekeepers as well. And just recently we had a chunk of exactly what you're talking about in our kitchen and we were snacking on it as dessert one night. And I personally love having the wax with it because afterwards you kind of have like a, a version of chewing gum that you're chewing on for a while. Okay. So, um, okay. Mm -hmm. I think there's a couple that we didn't quite mention that I want to make sure we squeeze in. Um, there's also sorghum. I believe you sell sorghum syrup. And I was in Tennessee a few years ago in the fall, and that is the time of the sorghum festivals. And I had this wonderful pleasure of actually harvesting some sorghum and putting it through the press and seeing how that all works. And I was shocked that it's simpler than maple syrup in the sense that it comes out 18% sugar right out of the plant, out of the stalk when you take it down versus when you're making maple syrup, you have 2% sugar in your sap that you're boiling down to get mm -hmm. to your syrup. So in that sense, it, it seemed a lot easier to me than um, maple syrup. But from what I understand, it also has a really great nutrient profile. It's probably a good choice, but the taste 
is definitely not as sweet as maple syrup. It's much more molasses-ish. Yes. Yeah, it's going to taste more like molasses. I think it's a very, I think it's a healthy option, um, you know, a healthier option than, than most things. And it's, I prefer it to molasses because, you know, molasses obviously comes as a byproduct of the sugar making process. Um, sorghum is uh, domestic for one thing. It grows here in the U.S. Um, the, sugar, the sorghum that Azure actually sells is still done the very old-fashioned way. We actually get it from the, the Am Amish folks. No need. And so they're actually doing it using their old, very old-fashioned uh, presses and all that. Um, but you know, they're using, they're doing it through organic processes. Uh, it is certified organic um, and um, done the old fashioned way. And you're right, it's, it's a plant just like, um, you know, well, in a way it's a little bit similar to cane sugar, cane, sugar cane, except this is a, a sorghum uh, plant, which is more, I guess, a little bit closer to the corn family, but it's mm -hmm. pressing, you know, it's just pressing the juice straight out of that. And yeah. you're just boiling that down. And you boil it. Yep. Just yep. Um, as you say, even less than than maple syrup to get it to the content that you want. But right. the taste profile is definitely more like molasses. Sorghum is something that you know in our house we do have that, but we don't usually cook with it. That's more. That's kind of our pancake syrup. That's yeah. you know that's what we eat. Put that Wait, on sorghum. Yeah. Really? Okay. Our favorites. I'm not going to hold that against you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so last one is agave on my list. I don't know anything about it. What is that? Agave is from a cactus. Oh. Um, mostly made in Mexico. It grows very uh, profusely in Mexico. It is the cactus that tequila is made out of. So when they press basically the agave without refining it down, um, they ferment it and it turns into tequila. Huh. Um, How about that? But agave, if you boil it down, kind of like you do maple syrup or something else, the sap of this cactus, um, it is agave. Now, my understanding is agave is a little bit simpler sugar than maple syrup or honey. It, it tends to run uh, closer to, um, it has a lot higher fructose content in general okay. Okay. than honey or maple syrup. Those are a lot more complex sugars. So okay. agave is, you know, it is very natural. Um, it's cactus juice. Hmm. Um, and by the way, the byproduct of that is inulin that is used in a lot of candies and things like that. Yeah. Um, is wow. the fiber or the byproduct of agave and or tequila huh. from the same cactus. At least most huh. of it is there there. You can get it from other places, but that's the primary source. Hmm. Um, Fascinating. Well, I'm glad I squeezed that last one in and asked because I had no idea. You just taught me something really fun that I can tell everybody around the dinner table tonight. <laughs> Well, I am so glad that you took the time to sit down with us today, David. Thank you so much for helping me wrap my head around all this sugar stuff and all the listeners as well. Um, and I am talking about Azure Standard often on social media, and I'm going to make sure in the show notes of this podcast, I leave a link where everybody who doesn't know and who hasn't ordered from Azure can go check it out and see if there is a drop near them and find out the excitement of all the great things that you offer. So. Thank you well, so thank much. You. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, we're here to support. We love to support anyone in your journey towards a better health and a better, yeah. better and healthier lifestyle. And remember, well, it's not about a diet. It's about long-term changes that really makes the difference. Yes. Thank um, you for bringing us full circle and back to where we started. It's a great point to, to end on. So thanks so much, David. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate it. So I hope you guys found that episode to be as sweet as I did. Yes, pun intended. And 
Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for joining me. I couldn't do what I do without you. It would be pointless. I, I'm so thankful that you're here. And um, make sure you go to solelyrested.com and look up this episode, which is S7E3, or just simply type in Azure Standard or just type in Azure, A-Z-U-R-E, in the search bar, and you will find access to all of this detailed information that David went over in a way that's you know, you can kind of dive into deeper and manage a little better than just listening to it once because there's so much there. And there you'll also find the link to find out the Azure standard drop near you. And if you're a new customer, you'll have the code there where you can save 10%. So definitely go check it out. And in the meantime, remember, it's easy to forget how blessed we are to live this life. So enjoy those simple everyday efforts and enjoy really healthy, good for you sweeteners. And well, take heart. I know it's not easy, but it's a very good life.